Participation Activity 4.3.2, Weights of Adult Males. The weights of adult individuals in a certain country are normally distributed with a population of mean of mu equals 172 pounds and a population standard deviation of sigma equals 29 pounds. Again, this is the population standard deviation because this is sigma. It's not a sample yet. We're looking at the population. Suppose n equals 36 individuals are sampled. So what we're, in our minds, we're thinking of if we were to pull a sample of 36 out of this overall population. Okay, so that, keep that in mind. It's important to remember that we're looking at a sample of size equals n36. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of the means? So that is if we were to pull a bunch of samples from this population. So here's one sample of 36. There's another, another sample of 36. There's another sample, another sample. Let's say we pulled 100 samples each of size 36, and each of those samples we took their mean. So let's say we took 100 samples. Let's consider if we had a hundred sample means then. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of means? That mean is the same as the population mean. So mu here, mu x sub bar is the same thing as mu. So it's going to be 172. Check. Correct. What is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means? In this case, um, we have um, the, the standard deviation is sigma divided by square root n. I'm going to show you just to do it in quick, a quick um, here in Excel. So let's say we're given sigma is, oops, our standard, our, our population standard deviation is 29. That's our sigma. Our n here is 36. So our standard deviation um, of the sampling distribution is going to equal sigma divided by the square root of n, so 4.83. Now, you can do this in your calculator or wherever else you can do it by hand, you know, by hand instead of using Excel. I'm just going to show you because for me personally, since so much of the work we're doing here is in Excel, I usually have an Excel window open, and this comes in handy. And you'll see in a second why it comes in handy. So let's go ahead and come over here, 4.83. Oh, we need one more decimal place, 3. See here it has one, two, three. So 4.833, check. Correct, 4.833. All right, part three. What is the probability that n equals 36 randomly selected individuals will have a mean weight of at least 180 pounds? That means that we're looking at the probability that x is greater than or equal to 180. Okay? That's what that means right there. Remember, when we look at the standard normal distribution, that's when we look at that z, and we have the probability, it's usually the probability that that the um, x is less than. So we need to look at the other side of that. So in order to do that, we also need to remember that the sum of all probabilities is 1. So when we, let's go ahead and go through and do our calculations, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a minute. So let's go ahead and plug in our, so I already have like my um, titles here. This is what I like to do because I like to keep it organized. So my X here is 180. All right, so that's 180. The, um, oh, that should be you, mu. That's our population mean, mu. That's 172. So we have 172. All right, so now we have all of our unknowns. Now we need to find our Z. Remember Z? equals x minus mu all divided by standard deviation. Now, where it's very easy to get confused here, it's very easy to use sigma, the population standard deviation. But remember, we're looking for the probability that the randomly selected individuals in that sample have a mean weight of 180. Not that if we were to pull one individual, they would have a mean, that they would have a weight of 180 or more. That the mean of the sample is greater than or equal to 180. So that means that we need to use this standard deviation. So remember, z calculation is equal to x minus the mean divided by standard deviation. Again, we need to use that sample standard deviation for that sample of 36. Oops, I just did it the wrong way. I clicked on the wrong way. So divide, sorry, by that. So again, x minus mean all divided by the standard deviation. That gives us z of 1.655. Now, we need to say the norm dot s. Remember, we're looking at the sample. So we, we're looking at that sample mean, not just pulling one observation, looking at the probability, but the probability that the mean of that sample. 
So we need to use norm.s.dist. Our z is right here, and we're going to say true. But what I do, you can do one of two things. You can either say 1 minus, which is going to give you your answer, but let's say you forget to do that. This gives you actually the probability that x is less than, oops, x is less than 180. So to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 180, oops, geez, typing is bad. You would say this equals 1 minus this. Now, again, I'm going to just show you how you can do that in just one step. You could just say equals 1 minus norm.s.dist, pick your z, and say true. Because remember, the sum of all probabilities is 1. These two possibilities uh, uh, cover any possible outcome. So the sum of these two probabilities has to be 1. All right, so that means that the probability that that mean for that sample is going to be at least 180 is 0 0.049 once we round it to three decimal places. Let's do 0 0.049. Oops, check, and that's correct. All right, so I hope that helps anyone having a hard time or just maybe needs a little bit of um, extra explanation for participation activity 4.3.2, I believe. Yep, 4.3.2. If you have any questions about that or anything else, let me know.